So today I want to tell you about the most common mistakes in weight loss that I see. I've seen thousands of patients in my medical career now. I talk to a lot of people about diet and exercise, and I will tell you the most common things I hear, what to avoid and what you should do instead. Good morning. <laughs> Summer says good morning too. Hi Summer. No, this is mine. All right, good morning. Um, I have a lot of anxiety today. I don't know why. I did go to Chase this morning and did big girl things. I'm so excited to tell you what we've been up to. I also been eating a lot less. Um, I'm cutting. Cutting just means trying to lose fat. And you're gonna say, Jenny, you're cutting and yet you're eating a Rice Krispie? Yes, I am. <laughs> It's probably not really good lighting, but uh, we are going to plant some of these things. Uh, anyways, the biggest mistake that I see patients do when they say they are trying to lose weight is that they automatically cut calories. Like they go from eating a normal diet of 2000 or like 2500 or even 3000 calories and all of a sudden they're like oh i need to cut it down to 1200 calories or 1400 calories because that's what my fitness pal is telling me if i want to reach my goal weight within this certain amount of time <laughs> and my heart just like breaks for people who believe that this is the way that you need to lose weight for several reasons and that's and that's it it's hopefully it grows and I think that the common thing that we fail to realize is that we burn a lot of calories just by living did you know that the brain burns three to four hundred fifty calories a day just by thinking just by using our brains I saw this research um, I forgot what it was, but they were looking at chess players, championship chess players, and they were saying how um, someone could burn up to 6,000 calories just by their, in their day by playing chess. Not saying that you should just sit on your butt and play chess, but our bodies need calories to sustain living, to be a functional human being. I don't know if you guys have my fitness or the Apple Watch. I wanted to point this out because I was talking about this on TikTok and a lot of people didn't know about it. So you see how here is your overall calorie workout thing. Anyways, so you see here is the number of calories you burn in your exercise. But down here, if you look closer, you don't know, can't see that, is your total amount of calories burned. So here's an example. On this day, right here, Wednesday, I did not close my move ring at all. I did not exercise at all, but I did like stand up for a total of 12 hours and I burned 1753. 1753. <laughs> that means that if I was eating 1700 calories, I would be in maintenance which means that I would not gain weight. If I eat 1800 calories, then I may gain weight over time if I do that consistently. So when people are cutting down to 1200 or 1400 calories, like that is just not sustainable. So please don't do it. And so even then when you lose a bunch of weight because you cut your calories, you are also gonna lose a lot of muscle. And eventually, when you start eating again, because we all need to eat, you will gain that weight back a lot faster and you will have a hard time losing it because you lost all your muscle. <laughs> so I realized that a lot of us don't know how to actually calculate our maintenance needs calories to properly do a restriction. So we're gonna go over it together. You're going to Google TDEE calculator and then it's gonna look something like this. Put in your information. I am female, I'm 33 years old, I am currently 132 pounds, and I am five foot four. 
well, technically five, three and a half, but you know, we round up. And then this is the important part. We want to put in the type of exercise that we're doing. I am currently exercising three to four days a week, and that's why I put that. And then I put 18% body fat just because I know that this is what I get on my scale that it gives me. And you see here how calories are 2,217 calories for my maintenance. So if I'm consistently under that, then I will lose weight. And if you don't know if you're between sedentary or light exercise, pick a number between the two. If you don't know if you're between light or moderate exercise, pick between the two. Say if you do have a desk job and you walk your dog twice a day, pick a number, be, you know, like light exercise. And then forget about the ideal weight, like that is complete BS. Um, no one should look be looking at that number. So what you wanna do when you are trying to be in a calorie deficit is only subtracting one to 300 calories from this top number that they give you. And the reason why is because we are trying to avoid severe hunger. Severe hunger leads us to release hormones that then causes us to binge eat. It's an inevitable cycle. So keep the deficit small, be consistent, and then you'll see change. New updates to the gym. We still have tempo. Uh, we got a new barbell. We actually got this from OfferUp for like $75. You're always asking me where I get my gym equipment and I look it up for you. Um, but these things like honestly are so old. These are like pre-pandemic, pre-med school, pre-pregnancy, like when Stan was a bachelor, <laughs> okay? So it's been a long time. Um, but OfferUp is a really good place to look for weights and things like that. Amazon might be okay, but other websites just Google weights and you'll be good <laughs> the second biggest mistake about weight loss are fad diets during my wellness visit i always ask my patients so what's your diet like what do you like to eat and they always start off by saying it's not good i'm trying to do better my goal is weight loss i started keto <laughs> or I started some other fad diet or something along those lines. And I always ask as a follow-up question, so what does that mean for you? What does keto mean? Because your definition of keto might be different from my definition of keto. And so some of them would say, oh, it's just more lots of lean protein, lots of vegetables. And I'm like, so you're eating just a more balanced diet with whole foods and simple ingredients. And they're all like, oh yeah, I guess, but it's keto. So if you guys know, keto is actually very specific, originally developed to treat epilepsy in children, so seizures in children. And that diet is specifically containing 70% fat, 20 to 25% protein, and five to 10% carbs. And so, a lot of my patients, when they say keto, they're not actually doing true keto. Unless they come to me and they're all like, oh yeah, I'm doing keto, I'm putting butter in my coffee, I'm eating lots of Brazil nuts and things like that. It's great for weight loss, I guess, if you're in a calorie deficit, but it's not sustainable long term and it makes your cholesterol like shit. And then you'd be increased risk of cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, strokes, dementia. As a doctor, I look at the whole picture. Yes, there are vanity measures that we want to look better, but also what's more important to me is that you feel better, that you love the skin that you're in, that you love the life that you live, that you can still enjoy the things that bring you happiness. And I find that most people go to the extremes, whether that be juice cleanses or keto diets or even fasting for long periods of time to kickstart their fat burning or metabolism it's just not realistic and even though i'm here telling you like the easy sustainable way of weight loss is actually just 
proper nutrition, consistency, doing the same things over and over, it's not sexy to hear. A lot of people don't really want to hear that. They want to hear, oh, I have this fad diet for you and you need to eat at these certain times and these are the foods that you need to avoid to be able to lose weight. Because if we admit that, we have to admit that we've been doing something wrong. Weight loss is simple. Doesn't mean it's easy, but the concept of weight loss is simple. Energy, calorie deficit to lose weight. Get enough protein and resistance training to build muscle. That's it. How we do that, how we incorporate the, that into our lives is what's the hard part. Okay, time for lunch. I'm starving. Well, there was no more tofu. So I'm gonna eat this cabbage salad instead. I don't know if you guys can see over there. But yeah, so I'm eating this cabbage salad instead with chicken. There's two more chicken that I poached. Um, but yeah, see like this is this is a lot of food for a little person. But a lot of people think that they just don't, they can't eat when they're trying to lose fat. And that's not always the case. You wanna to try to find high volume foods that have lower amount of calories. So like cabbage, very low calories. I'm personally using chicken thigh because I like the taste better. It is a little bit higher in fat, but you can use chicken breasts, shrimp, tofu, fish, any other substitute protein you want that's leaner and it'll help you lose weight just by swapping out beef or pork with chicken, fish, tofu. If you're Vietnamese, this dish is called goi, 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 <laughs> goi. It's just like a salad, like a cabbage salad. So refreshing, so good. I personally love it. Finished. What you chewing on? And then the last thing that I want to mention that is a big mistake is that let me get down here. I don't think that you are consistent long enough to see results before giving up. You know, like you might have been doing all the right things, but then after a month, only four weeks, then you don't see any changes, and then all of a sudden you give up. Like, it takes a long time for your body to change. <laughs> it seriously does take your body a long time to change. And if you can tell yourself that if you're consistent, so if you're able to do it for an entire year, that you're actually in an energy deficit, doing the activities, this type of exercise that you love, and just being consistent, then after a year, you can potentially have the life and the body that you want. If you keep telling yourself that, even though the day-to-day -day might not be exactly what you want, there'll be ups and downs, but if you know that ultimately Ultimately, at the end, if you stick with it, you will reach your goals. So that's what I try to tell myself. Um, you know, like consistency. Consistency is key. I remember when I started, I was still breastfeeding and it really increased my appetite. And so it was harder for me to be at a caloric deficit, but I just wasn't as active, like I didn't walk 10,000 steps consistently. Um, and then when I exercised, I was a couch potato for the rest of the day. So it kind of like cancels out on how much energy I actually used. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Hi. So that is all. So let me know if you have any other questions because I really want you to succeed. I hate that so many of you are frustrated and just stressed out about this whole process. I want to personally live a happier and healthier lifestyle. And so ask me anything, ask me all your questions and I will help answer them to the best of my abilities. Okay, Summer, say bye. <laughs> Peace. Peace.